What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have What If Issei Was Abandoned Part 9. Let's try to hit a thousand likes and if you guys want to know exactly when I upload slash my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. If you guys want to become a balance breaker or a limit breaker right now, I'll leave the link literally in the premiere and you can try to become one on the stream. So thank you so much for the support. Once again, let's try to hit a thousand likes. In the description below is my Ampopowski channel and Fallen DxD. Those are my two second channels. Ampopowski is my Dragon Ball channel. So if you want to go over there and subscribe, hit the sub button. It'll be linked down in the description below as, long, as well as in the related channels. Thank you so much for the support. This episode is going to be an intense one. But without further ado, let's go ahead and thank my balance breakers. Rob the King, Lachlan Yates, Atomic Warlord 58, Crumbling Darkness Fear, Ant Lewis, The Beast YT3, Colex, Josiah Baldwin, Jordan Patchow, Mazaku, Dr. Underscore MLG Underscore is the Bomb, Asimotus, Grimfire Shot Gamer, Keep Saying 21, That Round Guy, Dragon Lord 003, and Zero Fusion. Thank you so much for becoming a Balance Breaker, which is the highest membership tier. I also see you, my Limit Breakers, don't think I don't notice. So once again, what if Goku series and what if Issei had Ultra Instinct the movie will be coming out very, very soon, a special for 30k as well as a live stream with my face on it. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into part 9. We are right in the middle or at the very end of chapter 5 if you would like to follow along. Let's go ahead and get started. Sarah Fall and Gabriel were close to each other, their own hands on their mouths not believing what they heard. Tears formed in their eyes and fell noiselessly. Such a kind boy having to go through all of that, it makes their heart break. Falbum wasn't sleeping, and st instead his eyes widened. Although he did not know Issei firsthand, he knew that he was a great guy. For something that horrible to have happened to him, he didn't know how to react. Michael was like Sir Sex, gripping his fist while a huge amount of regret filled him. He had helped all of the heaven that much, yet when they needed help, they all ignored him. He knew that pretty much everyone felt terrible. If just once, they would have looked into their magic circles. If they just once would have answered a call from him, then nothing like this would have happened. Azazel, after some time, finally spoke up. You said a rather familiar code. What do you mean? The question made everyone look at their green-haired scientists, even Grafia, that was awoken by the Crimson Mao. Remember the incident that was caused by my relative? All of them nodded their heads. They didn't understand why he was asking that, but Azazel soon widened his eyes and almost tripped at the realization. It seems you figured it out. At that moment, Issei Hiyono entered a mode that turned him into a monster. At the mention of those words, the rest widened their eyes. The Juggernaut Drive. It appears the code just like a virus, defended itself against the attack of the pieces and managed to instead breach their defenses, corrupting them, he told them. The result was eight corrupted evil pieces, which sole goal was to kill Issei Hyoto, with everything they had at their disposal. And the best way to do that was through the emotions that filled him with power. They turned all those emotions and feelings into fuel for themselves to keep growing, and my guess is that the pieces would have killed him by the end of this month. Ajuka dropped the bomb. Soon everyone had no expressions left on their face, only visible emotions could be seen in their eyes. Grafia was filled with pain, soul-breaking pain. Michael had so much regret coming out of his person that it was a mystery how he was still sane. Azazel had anger directed at himself, so much of it that aura surrounded his body. Sir Zex was filled with dread. His face was pale and only could see his legs all wobbly. His eyes were the same. Both Seraphon and Gabriel were crying, agony visible in their eyes. They were even hugging each other. Falbum was biting his lips, discomfort written all over his face, and Ajuka was filled with bitterness. His head was even lowered in shame. These emotions were stronger in Sir Zex, Azazel, and Grafia because they heard from Vali a long time ago that he felt the juggernaut drive of Issei, but they decided to ignore it. And because of that, this happened! If they decided to invest even a little bit of their resources or even a little bit of time looking on to see if Issei was fine, just in case, then things would have been different. Grafia among them was the worst. After all, it was all her that dismissed the idea completely and even told her husband not to worry about it. If she had been more cautious, then his little brother wouldn't have been gone through so much. Issei, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. 
How can I call myself your sister after I ignored you like that? At the most important moment, more and more tears came from her eyes. What about the recording? What does that have? Seraphal asked while she cleaned the tears in her eyes. The rest stopped their trains of thought and looked at the little dish with two buttons. Soon, Gravia ran towards it and grabbed it. She looked around to see everyone nodding. Then she pushed the black button and the image appeared at the front of the disc for all to see. Recording plays. <laughs> Is this thing on? The voice of the image of Ise was seen. No one dared to even breathe. Yes, partner. See the light. That's proof of it. The voice of a dragon was also heard. I see. Good. Thanks, Drake. No problem. Their voices... Work heard clearly. Well, if someone found this, then that means two things. Either I died, or you were looking for me and coincidentally found this. The voice of Ise was empty. When he talked about his own life, they could see how he didn't care about it in the slightest. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I believe in this because I'm about to do something dumb. And according to Drag, the chances of success are so close to zero that they are basically zero. So this is a will. Memory. Suicide letter. Name it as you like. Everyone could see how bad he was. He had messy, unclean long hair, large, black-eyed bags underneath his dim yellow orbs. His eyes were dead, exactly the same as those of a corpse. They held no light. His body was so skinny that his skin was basically glued against his bones. Right now... Me and Drake are about to do our plan named Suicide Attempt. The name made the ones watching clutch their hearts on their chest. What kind of plan was it that it deserved such a name? It's simple, really. I'm about to remove my evil pieces from my body and hopefully not die. Those words made the eyes of all turn into saucers. No wonder it was named like that. Now, the climax. The reason I do this is because, well... <laughs> I have nothing left. During the past couple of months, everyone left me behind. Only a few people had the decency to at least say goodbye to me. Everyone I held dear vanished, as if they all had found something else. And unknowingly, it indeed was like that. The people inside the room froze. Sir Zex, Grafia, Azazel, and Michael were the most affected ones. They knew that Issei was talking about them, but it seemed as if they were talking about something else. At that moment, in a single day, I discovered I was dismissed and ignored by everyone, by everything. I was broken, mentally and physically, and at that moment, I activated the juggernaut drive out of pure negative emotions, but the last shred of sanity I had stopped me from fully activating it. Since the juggernaut drive stopped, then I should had become better. Wrong. Everything be just became shit. At that moment, the evil pieces inside my body were further corrupted and they became eight malicious spots which devoured my body and life force constantly. I named those eight spots Corruption. But if you think that was the worst, think again. Issei kept throwing jabs at everyone. Because of the same pieces of shit, I could no longer sleep. Every time I slept, I dreamed of spitting behind my back. I had nightmares, horrible nightmares. The recordings made all of the people watching it feel terrible. They wanted all of this to stop, but it appeared no one answered their prayers. After the nightmares, I thought everything would stop. Wrong again! The nightmares became night terrors, in which I vividly experienced how you all insulted, scorned, hit and abused me, and the girls were just watching, laughing at me, especially them. They did so many things in front of me. So, so many to the point that I just broke. All of those words, everyone felt so dizzy that they couldn't analyze everything perfectly. And due to that, they were unable to completely understand what he meant by that. As soon as they regained their bearings, they tried to calm themselves down. But then they looked at the eyes of Issei and all of their efforts were down the drain. They all felt goosebumps on their skin. Their faces paled and hair stood on the end. Those eyes, they will never forget them. His eyes were dim, dreadful, distressing, miserable, as if light was lost, as if reason one had to live was gone, as if every trace of sanity just evaporated. They knew he had hit rock bottom. So I gave up on sleeping. Many days went by and I still haven't experienced a good night of sleep. Yet the worst hadn't come. All of them internally begged Issei to stop. 
He lifted his shirt and what they saw made everyone inhale a cold of breath air. These things became more violent. On his chest, three disgusting, swirling, pulsing black spots could be seen. Seeing them made everyone swallow their spit loudly. Even some held back their desire to throw up. These are the locations where the pawn pieces are and are the positions in which I feel the most pain. But after this no longer, even if I die trying, I will get all of these horrible things out of me, Issei told them, and for the first time energy filled his tone. That's why I decided to do this. I literally have nothing left to lose. So to whoever is seeing this, I hope you could make this our little secret. Let's say that if words get out, then many things will happen. The recording finished, and silence filled the room. They were surprised. Just how much did he suffer? Everyone, I know there's a lot to digest, but everything we saw today will kept among us. Azazel was the first to speak. He was appalled by everything, but with a force, with the will could continue. Plus, Issei is still alive, Azazel stated, confidence in his tone. How do you know that? Seraphil asked him. Well, the pieces couldn't have flown back from his body. Accommodated themselves on a wooden box and coincidentally placed themselves on Issei's desk. Could they? He survived his so-called suicide attempt, came back, I don't know why, and left the pieces. Azazel acted as a leader for once and motivated everyone. The woman regained the light in their eyes, especially Grafia. The men were pretty much the same. The question is, where is he? Where the rumbling his chin? The fallen asked. This little push made everyone get their energy back. True, we need to find him. There are many things we need to tell him, even if it's not worth anything, we should at least... At the very least, apologize, Zerzek said to everyone. Now they had a goal they needed to accomplish. What should we tell Rius and the rest? Grafia asked. Indeed. We are all accomplices of this, but there's not much information about what they did. And EC's recording doesn't tell us much. Just that they all made him do it. The best we could do is find information and complete this puzzle. Many things just don't make any sense, Ajuka told them. Yes, many things don't make any sense. Why exactly Why exactly activated the drive? What forced him to do to these extremes? What are those nightmares he spoke of? Those things that happened that caused him to do so much grief, Michael replied, also confused about all of this. The words of Ise were too cryptic, too general. Seems like we need to do our own research about this. Sir Zex closed his eyes and he said this. Anyway, we should tell them that Ise left, but we shouldn't tell them the reason, or at least what we know of it, Azazel proposed. They need to learn from their mistakes, and in a way, pay for it. But I believe, what if we make them see this? He pointed at the recorder. It will break them. Grafia agreed with their plans. All of them still had questions about why Issei did this, but one thing was clear. It was, in a way, related to the girls. Although they needed more information about the true reason, now they had some clues. And they all agreed that they didn't want to watch the recording again. Too much for them. But, due to that, some details slipped their minds. However, they didn't know about that. Right. They needed to investigate more deeply into this. And now... They could only wildly guess. I see. So we'll tell them Issei is gone and that we do not know the motive of his decision. Then, by their own thoughts, they will, in a certain sense, think it's their fault, Ajuka explained by the rest only nodded. Better that way. Once we find Issei, we will talk to him about a lot of things. Grafia regained her former appearance. She wanted to talk to Issei and clarify things. The rest only rested on whatever chairs were left and started to dis digest the information they gained. It was pretty, but they needed to do it. Soon silence filled the room, and no one spoke for a long time. Scene changed the Hyoto Mansion. Right now it was too late in the afternoon, just about nighttime, and the group of people reached the Hyoto Mansion. The group consisted of the RC, Irina, Ravel, and their boyfriends. Seeing the huge building, Reggie asked, What's that place? He was surprised all of his life he lived inside Ko, yet this is the first time he had seen this building. The rest of the men accompanying them nodded their heads simultaneously. That's... Issei's house. Dismissing the subject, Zenovia answered the question. The rest of the men became petrified, not believing what they heard. Soon, they once again heard the voices of the girls. Hey, don't stay there, 
We need to enter, Akano screamed at them. The ORC was just at the door of the mansion. The men hurriedly ran over to them. They ran past the gate and almost closed them. A huge, thick wooden door was the only thing separating them from the inside of the building. In their eyes, the building was enormous, maybe having five floors or more. It looked like an apartment complex than a single house. Issei, we're here. Please open up. Rias knocked on the door while she raised her voice, trying to catch the attention of the owner of the building. Maybe he isn't home, Akino said to Rias. How could that be? It's Friday afternoon, almost night. He's probably training. Rias didn't believe the words of her queen. Reaching the doorknob, she turned it towards the right. The door moved. A click was heard. The door opened afterwards. The door was left open. Maybe he's training and left it open just in case? Rias believed her own words and stepped inside of the house. Today, rather in the rather late in the morning, she left to gather the rest of the ORC and the boys. They had to explain to their parents that they will not be home very often, but with the help of a little bit of magic, the approval of the boys, they made it possible. With Reggie, they told his parents more or less the truth because of that. Much more time was spent, but in the end, they agreed, getting a sigh of relief from both Rias and Akino. Walking in, everyone noticed how no one was at home, at least by the looks of it. Then Konako released her ears, entailed, and said, Issei Senpai isn't home. This made the rest of the girls widen their eyes. Kiba was a bit surprised as well, but he was happy. If he met the men in beside him, he will raise hell. And oh, he was sure of that. He isn't home? Rias raised her voice. Maybe he had things to do. Irina tilted her head cutely. While she tried to explain, the rest were suspicious, but they left those suspicions behind. It's impossible for him to be away. Maybe he was doing groceries or something like that. They all thought the same. Their feelings were still unsettled, and the fact that Issei wasn't home made them a bit paranoid. Okay, let's start training, Rias told them. Then the mech just swallowed their spit in anxiety. But before that, you need to know a bit more about the supernatural world. Through the weekends, we'll slowly teach the basics and a bit about our world, Rias was talking. Then they went to the staircase. Since there were too many, they still didn't fit inside the elevator. Going up the few floors, they reached a place that Issei visited a lot, practically slept in. The library of the fifth floor. Opening the door, the men were impressed by the magnitude of the library. Everyone, we need some books, Rias declared. Azia, go to the magic section and search for the very ba basis of magic. Konako, look for the book in Sacred Gears. They should know a bit more about it. Zenovia, go for the book that explains the basics of the underworld, Heaven and the Gagar. Although we'll explain everything to them, we need... We might need another source of information. Giving orders, Rias told her parage. They named Yens... The named ones replied with a yes and went back to their test. Okay, while well they are gone, I'll answer the questions you may have. While crossing her arms under a big bust, Rias turns to the men present. Akino just smiled and stood at her side, ready for anything. I have a question, Rias. Ken raised his hand. Everyone's eyes widened, making him sweat a little. After all, he wasn't a man of public speech of rather gathering of people. Rias nodded her head. Light shined in her eyes. It seemed that she was happy about being capable of teaching someone something. We already know the basic hierarchy of the power of the supernatural world, so I would have to ask, how are the underworld's heavens and regards? Was it roughly divided? A very basic question that possessed no threat at all. Rias was about to answer, but Akino intervened. It should be better for me to explain the Gregars. After all, I'm half-fallen angel. She unruffled her wings, being feathery and dark in color. That took them by surprise. They never thought that that woman in front of them would be half-fallen. They knew about Konako's, after all, Kimajima told them. So they were not surprised when they saw her ears and tail, but it was different for the woman in front of them. Those wings looked scary, at least in Reggie's eyes. Not that he would voice it out loud, but first, you should know what a fallen angel is. Her voice stopped their thoughts. Fallen angels are angels that have fallen from grace of God due to having impure thoughts that divert them from the teachings of the God of Bible. The leaders of the Gregor were tempted by human women and fallen after having sex with them. And despite being cast out of heaven, fallen angels can still use the power of light, Akino explained seriously. The men were shocked they didn't know about that, except for Reggie because of familiar circumstances. Gregor is an organization created by Azazel and fallen angels who fell with him. They were also called the Watchers of the Children of God. In other words, the looked after the sacred gear possessors. Her voice echoed all over the library. 
They're just explaining the Gregar again. She roughly gave an explanation of the Gregar. The man felt the horizons broaden. At least they weren't ignorant about it. The leaders of the Gregar are Azazel, Shemazel, Barkil, Cocaville, Amarosh, Charmaniel, Piamin, and Tamil, and they are known as the Catre, having the strength above ultimate class and hereby being the leaders of the organization. Akino finished her explanation and hit her wings. The men tried to dis digest the new information they gain and just stood there soon closed their eyes after some time passed someone asked how about heaven <sniffs> irina replied as fast as she could me me she was extremely excited and energetic her little eyes could be seen the sh she showed her wings something that aside from her boyfriend surprised everyone a real angel how many asked his Mouth completely open, the scene caused a pair of giggles from Konako and Ravel. <laughs> a self-proclaimed one, she's a reincarnated angel, similar to the Parage system. The angels have one as well as based on cards, called Brave Saints. Zenovia laughed at Irina and explained to them. The boyfriends thought was highly likely, after all. If the devils could transform in any other race into their own, why could the rest not? Let me continue. While puffing her cheeks, an Irina scolded Zenobia, who just smirked. The angels are the most powerful beings who serve the biblical god, and have the powers to inflict pain upon devils, and by extension, the fallen angels due to the light-based powers. They live in heaven, which is divided into seven layers, or as they call them, the seven heavens. Our leaders, seraphs... I really don't care at this point. I'm just gonna skip past this. <clears throat> And they start explaining the Evander world. The men were happy. Now they knew about the world a bit better. If you wish to know more to come, learn from the books. It would be better for you that way. Rias finally talked. A sigh escaped her mouth, making Akino at her side giggle. Any last questions before we start the training? She asked them. Only one of them raised their hand. Nodding her head, he sighed to them to talk. In the past, you mentioned the strongest battle-oriented sacred gears. What exactly are they and what do they do? Soji asked. Curiosity filled his voice. He seemed really interested in that subject. Rias was about to speak, but when Kiba pronounced, May I? I have a sacred gear, and I have the majority of the Longinus wielders, so I should be the best one to answer the question. Kiba proposed his master, getting only a tired nod from her. Thank you, he bowed to his master. The strongest battle-oriented oriented sacred gears are called the Longinus. You already know that they are capable of killing a god, and that they are the 13 of them, so I'll skip that part. Kiba stood in front of him. His aura was similar to that of a teacher, and then men hearing his lecture, he seemed quite knowledgeable and good at explaining. You should know that the name Longinus was derived after the first sacred gears, and the name of the true Longinus, the spear that killed the son of the god of the Bible, by the first and most powerful, and unlike other sacred gears that have more than one of the same type, the Longinus are pretty utterly and completely unique, and only have each that may exist at a time. They essentially combine powerful abilities that aren't opposed to be combined. Mind. Kiba began his explanation. He learned all of this from Azazel. The rest of the present paid attention to him. I'll tell you by their names, abilities, current possessors, but there's is no more questions. We need to start training. They just nodded. The true Long Giantess is also known as the Holy Spear. One of the three Holy Rex is currently wielded by Ko Ko. He's just explaining all the what they're saying, blah, 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 but I want to say this part. The boosted gear, or the Red Dragon Emperor's Gauntlet, is the ability to double without the limit user's capabilities, transferring power to anyone or anything. You already know who is the wielder. The smirk on Kipa's face made the rest of them gulp. Never would they ever thought that Issei Hyota would have something that dan dangerous. And then he goes through explaining the rest of the other Sacred Gear Longinus users, so I'm just going to cut that part out as well. They were surprised, so the Holy Grail was real. Okay, and then... Okay, we'll continue. Well, everyone, we need to start training. Rias concluded and stepped up. She managed to drag everyone out of the library and ran into the training field labeled number two. In less than a second, everyone was already ready to train. Azia, Irina, and Akino used the book to teach them the basics of human magic. Zenovia, you specialize on the sword and teach Soji a little. Kiba, you're a technique type. Please guide Ken. Konako, you and I will teach Reggie the basic of close combat and demonic magic. Well, everyone, let's start. But before they could start, a magic circle made its appearance in the center of the field. A man with luxurious robe made its appearance. He had a crimson red hair and blue eyes. The moment his eyes landed on Riest and the rest, they were filled with disappointment and guilt. He had silver-haired maid accompanying him, but her eyes were filled with regret and barely hidden sadness. Rias. Everyone, there's something you need to know. The man spoke to Rias and the rest, interested a bit of the identities of the men present, but quickly dismissed the thought. 
Onisama? What are you doing here? Even Gravia as well. What happened? Rias was surprised. She hadn't seen her brother and sister-in-law in a long time, and when they do come, they have things to talk about. Rias, who are they? Reggie asked the question everyone had in their minds. He's my big brother and one of the four mouths, Sir Zex Lucifer. She answered the question with pride. Even her eyes held a bird of light. Those words made everyone and her, every man here pale-faced. The man in front of them was the current Lucifer, a being of legend. Let's leave the greetings for another time, Rias. I came here to tell you something extremely important. Sir Zex felt his heart break when he managed to get the courage of telling his sister. He took his robe in a small wooden box. Rias, please remain calm. The maid at the side told the female, but she herself was almost failing to keep her emotions in check. Sir Zex resolutely handed the box to his sister. Rias grabbed it. She felt the horrible, and she didn't know why. Her heart was threatening to burst out of her chest. Her hands were trembling and her mind was spinning. She just manically received the wooden box and lifted the lid. Her face turned pale. Her lips blew. She let the box fall to the ground and its contents spread for all to see. Soon, everyone besides the men had the same face as Rias. No. No! Rias screamed at the top of her lungs. The rest were the same. Akuna was froze completely, not moving an inch. Irina and Ozinia had their hands on their mouths. Small amounts of tears were falling from their eyes. Zenovia and Konako held the same expression. Their eyes held nothing. Even the light of them was gone. Soon they started to tremble and a heavy aura was released from them. They don't even deserve to cry. Ravel was crying quietly, while turning her head away from the scene, not capable of watching it. Kiba was clutching his hands tightly. His bangs covered his face, but the aura he excluded was suffocating. Seeing the rest of the men tried to comfort them, but the sole aura they irradiated was enough to keep them away. The reason for all of the contents of the box now laid spread across the floor. Eight crimson pond pieces with black spots on them. Those were Issei's pieces. They wanted to reject the thought. But the familiar aura made them incapable of it. It was his aura without a doubt. How? How? Rhea screamed at her brother as tears fell from her eyes. We don't know. The answer made all the present place to their attention on the Mao. Azazel came to Issei's house to talk with him about his training and his longinus, but he couldn't find him. He searched everywhere and only found those pieces in a wooden box inside of his room. The words of the Mao were also filled with guilt. But soon enough, he controlled himself and went back to his normal tone of voice. We checked the heaven, and they said the Longinus is still with him. In other words, he's alive. Sir Zex gave them hope they needed. But why would he do something like that? All of you are with him, so why did he do something that could have cost him his life? It's not like you did something to him, so why? The Mao knew which buttons to push. Oh, that's what Sir Zex said. My bad. Let me redo that line. But why would he be doing something like that? All of you were with him, so why did he do something that could cost him his life? It's not like you did something to him, so why? The Mao knew. Which buttons to push? Just like those words made the girls freeze. The tone of the Mao was perfectly filled with curiosity and intrigue, so masked his intentions perfectly. All of the girls stopped their trains of thought. The idea of why he did it slowly spread all over their minds. They weren't sure, but Rias and Akino thought back when they last saw him. The change in tone when they last saw him. His cold eyes. His body that became too skinny, which they decided to ignore. The guilt of the formerly felt increased by ten times. Their heads stopped. Their hearts stopped. For a second, and their faces returned to being pale, but this time much worse in color. Their eyes were filled with too many negative emotions to describe, but two of them were obvious. Guilt and regret. We are currently looking for him. All three of the factions are. If our efforts turned out to be useless, then we would need to ask for help from other factions, Sir Zek stated. For once, the truth. His eyes and the ones of the maid being behind him were filled with eagerness and the will to fight. Those words made the girls gain a bit of hope. Let us help, Rias practically ordered his brother. Sorry, but that won't happen. This is extremely secret mission within the factions, so we will search for him on our own. You, on the other hand... Should not let this affect you. We don't know the reason behind it, so let the best choice is for us to find him and ask for ourselves. After all, we owe him that. The last words spoken made the girls turn back to reality. They knew that Issei was still alive, just missing. So why do they need to ask him? Why? They all had their suspicions and thought that would not let them rest in peace. They were 
their reason, but subconsciously rejected that idea. But what other reason could it be? Bad feelings and emotions were filling them. The guilt they felt about their own thoughts was big, but they wouldn't know unless they asked. So, until then, they were left alone with their own thoughts, something that would little by little eat them from the inside out. So, from this moment on, Issei Hiyoto is declared to be missing in action. The reason they declared him MIA was not just missing, was the world that still thought of him as a devil. By declaring him MIA, he wouldn't be counted as a stray and hereby hunted by others. The men were surprised by the sudden turn of events, but since they didn't know much, it didn't matter to them. Then the Mao came closer to his sister and hugged her. Rias. Don't let this affect you too much. He's fine and we will find him. Keep getting stronger, just leave this to us. You can be at ease. He, with a brotherly tone, consoled his sister. She just receiving the hug and nodded her head, cleaning the tears off of her face. Also, the date of the world-class rating games have been established. It will be less than three months from now, during autumn, maybe early winter. So, from this moment onwards, you have three months to become as strong as you can get, he ordered the rest of them. Yes, Sir Zaxama, all the devils in Arena shouted for the mouth to hear, he only smirked. With that, I leave you to start training. He picked up the pieces that were on the floor, activated the magic circle, and left. After he left, the girls were broken. Their eyes were filled with unhashed tears, and their faces were filled with regret. Don't worry, girls. We're sure he's fine, the five mentioned to console him, unknown to them the damage those words did. The former thought the girls had came back to their heads. They knew the reason he did this. They were the reason. They cried, and seeing this, the five of them came closer and hugged them. The moment they felt that hug, they thought, Issei. Tears fell even more than before. The guilt they felt was slowly courting them from the inside. Kiva watched this with eyes filled with grief. He had the suspicions of why his friend did that, but the only thing he could do was wait and hope for the best. He turned his head from the scene and looked at simple coating white. Ceiling. Come back soon, pal. His thoughts were directed at his best friend, which unknowingly right now was traveling around the world with a big smirk on his face. And that is the end of Chapter 5, The Other Side of the Coin. Chapter 6, First Journey and Descendant. Kyoto Station slash Present Day. A whole male made its appearance at the center of the rather empty Kyoto train station. It was pitch black and held a violet light. However, the silhouette of the figure could be distinguished inside of it. A man appeared from the inside of the hole and started to look around. The man had deep brown hair that was closer to black and almost bangs of his hair went to his right side, leaving his left one completely free. Guess who's back, ladies and gentlemen? Issei Hiyoto. In his forehead, a mark could be seen. It was black in color, with a tringe of red. Shining purple, it gave off demonic vibe that would scare anyone. He wore an Oxford gray coat that held no eyelets nor a zipper. The only thing that made him staying in a place was white string that came out of a pair of eyelets at the base of the neck. The string was tied up in a knot and rested on his chest. The rest of his eyelets, normally used for the buttons, were stitched up in colored and rather orpeak red. He also wore a form-fitting black t-shirt and pants of the same color. To the top it off, brown knee-length boots could be seen. They held no laces, and only a pair of red designs could be seen etched to onto them. That man was Issei. He left his home as soon as he got his clothes, still being Friday in the morning, close to midday. Wow, why is the station so desolated, he asked, to no one in particular. Walking around, he figured out the question, he figured out the answer to his question. A big sigh, that read, under maintenance could be seen near the wall, which also held old fashioned clock. I see. Is it good luck that there is no one here? I don't know. After all, my hell gate is capable of hiding my presence, even from supernatural beings. Ignoring the thought, he looked around the place. A simple station with gray concrete floors and two rails for the trains. He could be seen for workers checking the rails and changing them for new ones. The Kyoto station was the one that the main building on top of the actual stations, but the building was filled with the stores, food, clothing, and among the other things, while all the other stations' rail were down below, so it gave the impression of the subway. Issei put his hands into his pockets as he walked away. No one noticed him, and soon, after walking around, he reached the staircase. 
What place should I check out first, he asked to himself, while going up the stairs. Since the maintenance was halfway done, the escalators were completely stopped, and just in case any one of the people present upstairs thought the rail was open, he reached the top part of the stairs and crossed the yellow tape that kept people away from the location. After walking towards the right, he soon saw another pair of escalators, but the ones, these ones were fully functional. They were far away from the location, and not many people were walking in the hallway here. Well, the rail was closed, so they had nothing to do here. While looking around, Issa continued his journey. After a couple of minutes of walking, he reached the escalators. He saw and stepped on them, reaching almost the entrance of the station to see if people appeared out of nowhere, right in front of him. They quickly moved in different directions while pushing each other around. They were many people, young, old, male, or female, local, or tourist, but as soon as he reached the end of the escalators, some of them looked at his direction. After all, it was odd to find someone climbing up those stairs. The moment of the normal humans laid eyes on them, they stopped moving. They froze. The males were kind of frightened of him. His appearance gave him a bad boy feeling, and the tattoo on his forehead suited him perfectly. The cold look on those really odd eyes gave him a bad feeling. The aerated feeling that says, Don't mess with me. So like their instincts told them, they didn't mess with him. The female population was quite different. It all started from a couple of women that casually looked at him, but soon their friends accompanying them saw... The looks in their faces and looked in general direction they were staring at. After that, many of them, if not all the women, were staring at him. They all had two things in common. One was the blush on their cheeks, whether well, large or small, that depended on the female, and the second one that they just stood still, not moving. The ones that were actually walking around the place noticed this and curiously looked at the general direction, only for the same to happen, managing to create a perfect domino effect. After a few moments, the majority of the female population stood still and just looked at him. His bad boy look and presence attracted them. His clothing gave him a rather roughish vibe, making him quite the man in their eyes. His face, although it didn't look too handsome, it had a sharp features that showed experience in life. Issei was, of course, oblivious to all this. He was just looking at the station. Wow, it looks rather good for a station train. For a train station, those were his thoughts. He was interested in the looks of the station. The station was built to be open, so not much where the roof was seen. The light of the day peaked in between the steel grinders and managed to fill the entire place with a brilliant glow. A lot of glass could also be seen. It was either completely clear or tinted with a blue color. The smooth floor gave the impression of carpet and its gray color looked quite clear. Ridden from any injuries, some lamps could be seen at the extremes of the same station, but they were turned off. He could see towards the right. Towards his right, another pathway leading inside with a couple of souvenir shops at both sides. He looked in front of him and saw a big staircase with a single escalator at its right-hand side. If he had to guess, he should be in the Espalade that connects the shopping square inside the station with the shopping district. The big staircase since in front of them should be many entrances that exist. Hmm, now that I think of it, for a normal station, this is quite aesthetically pleasing. While nodding his head, Issei walked upwards, ignoring the blushes from the ladies and angry glares from from the males. Reaching halfway up, he turned his head towards the left and saw the building which entire facade was made out of glass. Wow, those should be the offices of the workers here. Issei turned his head up and sped up. Finally at the entrance of the station, he stared into the distance and inhaled a fresh of cold air. Ha! Huh. He let out a small smile. I'm free! I'm finally free of those people! He looked at the bright blue sky that had a visible ray of light. He then closed his eyes momentarily and felt the wind hit his face. Thank you. He didn't even know who he thanked, but after that, he felt relieved. Where should I visit? He looked around and started to walk in a random direction, and now that he was here, he didn't have to hurry. He crossed the road while still pondering to himself his next destination. Which place should I visit? Last time, but I didn't see it was because of the attack on Kyoto, right? He walked around the place a bit more, seeing the tall glass buildings and many people crossing the streets. A lot of things could be done. Here before he had any idea of what to do, a sound distributed his thoughts. Surprised by it, he blushed a little. Seems like I need to go eat something. He made a decision and turned towards the road. He now appeared to be quite the distance away from the station. It seems I got lost while I was walking. Surprised yet again by his luck, he looked at his surroundings. Not many things could be seen aside from a couple of buildings, houses and restaurants that were quite close to one another. Walking further inside the city without any fear, he strolled for a while. 
<sighs> he sighed in defeat. Not a single restaurant he liked. He was disappointed. It appears that I'll have to go to the market and buy food here. He turned around when he was walking away. He heard something that caught his attention. Come on, come on, it just opened up. You know that place that is filled, even if it looks, it looks bad on the outside. A young man with a normal Japanese hair said to his friend, both appear running and just casually ran past Issei. Yeah, yeah, I know. Don't drag me, we're still on time. Today is a good day. Not many adults or office workers go at this time of day. We have around an hour or more. The one that was dragged was similarly aged teen. He had long black hair and wore a school uniform that looked exactly the same as his friend. I wonder what the speciality of the day will be. While drooling, the first young man talked to himself, looking closely. Both the normal looking faces, the long haired one had brown eyes, white and the other one with black. Since they were a normal looking uniform, not much could be seen, but by Issei's guesses, they they shouldn't train anything in particular. Hmm, so a specialty of the day restaurant that looks bad on the outside, but the food is delicious. Caught my interest. That place should have something appropriate for him to eat. Those two are normal humans and no aura of supernatural being is stuck to them. They should be your average humans going to an ordinary restaurant. Issei turned around and slowly followed the young two young men without them noticing a small smirk on his face. Don't disappoint me. After all, my breakfast and probably the meal of the day depend on you. He appeared to be talking to both of them, but they were too far ahead to listen to him. Crossing the corner, both of the men talked to themselves. Hey, did you see that guy back there? The long-haired one asked his friend. Yeah, he looked dangerous, and although I hate to admit it, he's rather handsome. He should attract women by the dozens, the friend replied to the brown-haired pal, a bit of envy in his voice. Yes, but something bad about him looked but something about him looked special. Although we ran past him, I could still tell he isn't normal, the brown-haired eyed young the brown-eyed young man told his friend. They soon disregarded the man, but they saw but just saw and quickly kept running. Both of them didn't know what Issei heard everything. Look dangerous? Me? He didn't believe them. With a slow pace, he followed the two humans. For him, tracking was extremely easy. After crossing many streets, turning corners, and almost being hit by a truck, Issei reached the place in which he felt the presence of the two humans. Hmm. The shimmery shopping district. He read the sign that was on top of him. Held by two wooden pillars, blue in color. It appears that two humans brought him into the shopping district. Well, if the worst comes to worst, I'll prepare my own food. I see the market over there and a convenience store on the other side. So sure, let's try. He shrugged his shoulders and walked in, following the aura of the two students. At the corner of the block, he could see a normal and even below average restaurant. It had a winging red in color that appeared to be just cleaned off of any jimmy and dust. He saw a sign up there and read out loud. Yukari? A family business? Those always are the best restaurants. Deciding the place he was going to eat at, he hoped he wasn't wrong and walked towards it, soon reaching the sliding wooden door. Yukari, family restaurant inside. Scene change. So now we're inside the restaurant. On the inside of the restaurant, one can see a short, red-haired boy sprinting in between the wooden tables. He had a goofy look in his eyes, which were golden in color, and a smile on his face. A single scar was present on his left eyebrow, falling down until a little above his eyelid. Many different foods on plates were in his arms. Too many, in fact, that there was a risk of them dropping them. The man screamed. A beef stew! The young red haired turned his head and said, coming right up. Then he walked up towards the location of the man. He left the stew in a place after a couple of moments. All of his arms were empty. He just smiled and got back into the kitchen, which was literally the opposite side of the main door. This place was small. A limited number of tables could be seen, maybe around eight or nine, just enough for a young man to attend perfectly. The old man in the kitchen was looking for cooking to was cooking the food a newly arrived clients asked for. A pair of boys that got lucky reached this place on time. He had long brown hair, which is swept back, save for a single group of bangs that hangs over his face down to his chin. His eyes were sharper and more serious than the boy, which was standing in front of him, and also were golden in color, meaning that they were both father and son. He had a slight beard on his chin, and his body looked oh, very well toned. Oh gee. Everything has been delivered on time. Only those two you're left only those two you're cooking are left. 
After this, we shall have our duel, the boy pointed at his father with a clean smirk on his face. Oh, you think you can win, the father turned his head. While still cooking, a fierce light could be seen in his eyes. But of course, not feeling intimidating, he replied back, fine. Who shall be the judge? Everyone here has already been one. The father agreed but stated the problem they had. They wanted, if possible, someone new, but that person wouldn't open the door and just appear out of nowhere. Right, OG. While thinking, he put his hand on his chin. If someone could just appear, now that would be a blessing, he was hoping for it. He turned his head towards the door, and his father did the same. A couple of seconds later, the door was opened, and it appeared someone heard their prayers. Yes, the boy exactly yelled, they even raised both hands. The boy soon started to think what to cook, he didn't know what the man just entered the restaurant, but his father certainly did, and when he saw, scared him a bit. He knew that the one at the entrance of the restaurant wasn't a normal human being, this guy. The man looked down at the dark-haired boy. Standing at the entrance, he said, just closed the sliding door behind him and said, Excuse me, I have heard this place has some delicious food. I'd want, I would want to order. His voice was sharp and warm, a really odd combination of tones that everyone except the red-haired boy widened their eyes. He used this tone of voice on strangers so he didn't scare them off. After all, they hadn't done anything to him. His normal sharp and cold tone was for those he thought of as a threat. Everyone inside was staring at the man standing at the door. However, the thing that made everyone inhale a cold breath of air was the tattoo on the left side of his forehead, black with a tinge of red, and for them it looked like it shined with violet light. The shining made everyone think that he was just got it recently. His eyes were the exact same color as the tattoo, but, of course, without the violet light, ah, excuse me, he say, asked again, this time tilting his head. The young boy finally got back from his thoughts, and while looking at him with a smile and said, sure, please sit here. He pointed at the stool near the kitchen. The dragon nodded and approached the stool. All eyes were still on him. What exactly is wrong with this guy? I feel he's different in a sense, the old man in the kitchen thought to himself. He has traveled all over the world and met many varieties of people, from extremely rich owners of companies to royalty and even normal office workers at the side of the road. But not once has he felt presence such as the one man approaching him had. It was difficult to explain. It appeared dangerous and mysterious, yet also something was hidden. Yisei looked at the young boy in front of him, who was still smiling at him. Quite the young fella. He doesn't appear to be older than 16, but capable of resisting my natural aura. Quite amazing. Issei was surprised by the young man. Although a normal human, he seemed to be have a pretty strong will and didn't judge a book by his cover. In the near future, he will be someone recognized by all. He made his guess, which wasn't far off from the truth. What do you want to order? He heard the voice from the teen. Issei turned and looked directly at his eyes, maintaining eye contact for a couple of seconds, yet not a single bit of surprise could be seen in them. Hmm, about that. What is the special specialty for the day? He asked back. The young boy smirked and answered, Chicken egg? Turnpadon. Issei was convinced at the specialty and nodded his head, ordering that. Please wait a minute. The young man said to him, but then he turned and asked, Oh, may I ask you to be the judge of our duel between my father and I? The question surprised Issei, but the boy looked straight at him with hope in his eyes and a goofy smile made him nod. On what condition? He lifted the index finger and his left hand up. What is it? The eyes of the boy turned serious, but seeing the mysterious man smile at the corner of his mouth, he relaxed. Only if the food is delicious, that comment made the young boy turn around. While walking out of the kitchen, he said to him, But of course! It appeared to be at the restaurant of the owners, it was quite interesting. Issei sat there and closed his eyes for everyone. It appeared that he was taking a break. After a couple of moments, the rest of the people inside the restaurant started to talk again, this time about the mysterious man sitting on the stool. After a couple of moments, the rest of the people inside the restaurant started to talk again. Hey, what do you think of him? Unservedly, they asked amongst themselves in a voice they thought as low. I don't know. He looks odd and seems to be special in a sense, but I can't see how. Two older officers workers who were their lunch breaks talked to themselves. On the other side of the restaurant, two young women around their early 20s were also whispering between themselves. Don't you think he looks hot? A light brown haired woman asked her friend. Her eyes scanned the body from top to bottom of the one sitting at the stool. If only he was more fit, he would be perfect, she said once again. The man didn't look muscular and looked rather skinny. Maybe he was midway in his physical activities and training? Yes, the other woman whispered huskily. He looks like a bad boy and those eyes suit him perfectly. I would definitely do him. The long, dark-haired woman said as she locked her lips, unknowingly causing Issei to sweat and think. 
Not another Kiryu, please. It appeared to be that there were women that also perverts outside of Ko. The man inside the kitchen never took his eyes off the young man sitting in the stool. His son already took care of his order. He didn't do it because he felt something was weird with the guy in front of him. Grabbing all of his courage, he went closer to him with a friendly smile and tone asked, You don't look from around here. Did you get lost? The tone was as friendly as he could manage. Issei opened his eyes and looked into his, making the old man discreetly sweat. What kind of eyes are those? He screamed internally when he saw those pair of eyes clearly. They looked like they were synced in darkness, but the light they held was extremely firm and unwavering. They also transmitted a certain wisdom and a light that amazed him. What did you go through? That look for a kid not even 20 was exceedingly rare. Not even him. That was reaching his 40s and traveled around the world had that look in his eyes. Yeah, I'm new. I am traveling around the world and Kyoto is my first stop, the dragon answered. The question with a sharp and warm voice, although the man looked at him weirdly, it didn't hold any bad emotion, more like a surprise and caution. I see, a traveler. At the mention of the title, the old man smiled even further. I also traveled around the world when I was younger, a great experience. I'm glad there's still someone that wants to do it, remembering his younger days. He rested his body on the kitchen bar, getting closer to Issei. You also traveled around the world? His interest peaked, he asked the old man. Yes, you see... I am a cook that studied a rather prestigious academy, but in that place I once forgot what it was the most important to me, so I decided to travel around the world and find it again. He explained his story while making sure his son didn't hear him, after all it was a secret. And you did? Issei felt sympathy for the man. He was more or less going through the same situation. Yeah, I did. A woman was the one I found. I married her and had a child, the brat in the kitchen. He pointed his back where the teen was before cooking with a smile on his face. That moment was the best in my life. No trophy, no power, no glory. I once gained or will never gain will surpass the moment when she accepted to marry me. The man had a nostalgic look in his eyes, but they're also filled with happiness. And what happened to her? She passed away due to a sickness a couple years ago, he said in a calm voice. I'm sorry for your loss, Issei expressed his apologies getting a smirk from the man. Don't worry, you didn't know about it. Silence filled the place once again until surprisingly Issei broke it. Which country do you recommend me to visit? Since the man had experience and he seemed like he wasn't lying, Issei asked. Country? He thought he would ask inside of Japan, but he suddenly went worldwide. Do you have the money to travel around the globe? Issei just nodded. Hmm, he placed his hand on his chin, which places across the globe. Have you already visited? He asked back to him. Romania? Back during a Quillipoth attack, he visited a land of vampires. Maybe I should visit again. After all, I only went to the castles of the Carmilla and Tep's faction. The man, amazed by the sudden mention of the country, started to think. Do you think the west part of the world? Do you like the west part of the world? He had a couple of places in mind, but he needed to ask the young man. He suddenly nodded. You should probably do it like this. He stopped reclining himself against the kitchen bar and said, Go to the Kuwait and land of travel of Arabia. Probably go to Jerusalem. Cross Iran, Iraq, and Pakistan and then reach India. Once there, take a plane and fly to Germany and visit the countries around it. That's my recommendation, he told Issei. Sounds good. Issei was convinced. Maybe he should try to do it that way. Sorry for the wait. Here's your order. The team came back with a plate in front of Issei. Smells quite good. Issei didn't doubt for a second that he went in for the meal. In his words, it was delicious, and it came from him that eaten a high-class food quite normally. Good food, he said to the boy, only getting a smirk on his face. Happy to serve, the teen smirked while removing his white headband. After a couple of minutes, the meal was gone. So, would you be the judge, he asked with the stars in his eyes. Sure, if he could eat more delicious food without any extra cost, that would be fine by him. Great OG, prepare to lose. The red-haired teen had a proud smirk that only lasted as long as 15 minutes later. The same red-haired bat was on his knees in front of his father, crying and laughing bitterly. He was destroyed during the cooking match. Ha, huh, that should be around your 500th loss, he laughed at his son, happy about the result. That doesn't make it any better, he say thought, while well, he finished the rice bowl. The son said before that, I've actually only lost for the 89th time, he talked back to his father. Thanks for the food. He stood up from the stool, from the single plate, and turned around. Old man, thanks for the advice. I might do it that way. He, without turning back, said to the 45-year-old man. And, you kid, don't give up, Issei said, while he looked at his over his shoulder. You have much more potential than you can manage, and soon enough you'll be better than your father. Always remember that. His piercing eyes looked directly at the young man. That look in the mysterious man's face won't be something he will forget. Seeing the face of the young boy, Issei turned his head around and went for the door. What's your name? 
The team screamed at him. He wanted to remember the man with those piercing eyes, which told him he would be better than his father. EC stopped opening the door midway, debating over what he should do, but he gave up. For you, actually, it make me say my name pretty good. He held a smirk. Issei Hyoto. Don't forget it. One day I'll come back, and you better stand above that place you are today. Don't make my words go to waste. He slammed the door open and left, but before that he heard a voice. My name is Yukari. Better be back. Issei scoffed in amusement and left. A couple of moments flew by. The clients were inside, went silent during the exchange of the words between them. Issei Hyoto. Both the father and son carved the name into memory. The strange man that irradiated danger and mystery. This is probably the most abnormal person they'll ever meet. Remember, Soma, people like that exist all over the world. Some are more special than others. But like him, there are many people that will make you want to try your best. The father recommended to his son and continued his cooking. All over the world, huh? I bet we'll meet again, he say, and at that moment I'll be better than what I am now. He made a promise to himself, not knowing that soon he would be on a journey that will forever change him. And that is the end. And that is where we're going to stop. My apologies. I didn't mean to freak you out right there. That's not the end of the story. That's just where I'm going to stop. So it's right before a scene change in chapter six. So uh, thank you so much for the support. We actually hit 398 people in the uh, live stream last time in the premiere, which is the highest viewer count I have ever managed to get in my entire life. So it was actually really crazy to see. Thank you so much for the support. I just got done reading at about 657 and 7 slash 19 slash 2022, if anybody was wondering, because uh, I just ate dinner. And that was it. So thank you so much for the support. I don't know if this one was an hour long or not. It was probably 54, 53 minutes or something like that. But yeah, once again, my channel is down in the description below. Will be there. So and Popowski, follow on DXD. Go ahead and subscribe to them. Uh, and Popowski is my Dragon Ball channel. It's down. It's at the related channels and down in the description below. Thank you so much for the support. It's been absolutely amazing. Also, thank you to all my balance breakers. I cannot thank you guys enough, as well as my limit breakers. If you guys want to go ahead and hit that like button just before it ends, I would appreciate that much, much. Thank you. So, I would like to know your opinion on, obviously, what if Goku was too overpowered and what if Goku and Vegeta were locked in Whis's staff part one. Like, what do you guys think about those series? I love Dragon Ball. I know the story pretty good at this point. I've been watching it my whole life and reading it. I just bought the whole entire manga box. I'll probably show you that on stream. But if you guys want to stream as well, also hit the like button. I'll ask you in the premiere in a second here as well. I'll probably ask during in the middle of it just in case. You know what I mean? And I will have my face present as well. And that'll be a celebratory 30k. As well as the what if Issei had Ultra Instinct the movie will be coming out for a 30k special. Just depends. I got I got to work it out some more. And hopefully it'll get it out by 30k. But if it's like a little bit sooner after that, don't don't be angry at me. But thank you so much for the support. Let's try to hit a thousand likes once again. Without further ado, Spartanic Arts DXD out.